Now, before I start this video, I want to apologize about any echo you hear in the background. I'm in my studio at the moment, and my studio is being renovated, I guess you can say. I'm updating the studio, and it's about a 80, 90 square meter box, and it's empty, completely empty. There's no carpet, there's no sound baffles, there's nothing in here, so there's quite a strong echo. Now, I'm gonna try and remove the echo in post, and hopefully I can, but if I can't remove all of it, I do apologize you may hear a slight echo. Now, before I talk about my Leica MP and the film I'm taking and my trip to Taiwan and Japan, just wanna let you guys know, I have a new video coming out in a few days, which will be on a new bag from Wooten Craft. I purchased a bag, they didn't send it to me for review. I actually purchased it because I need a new camera bag, basically a small camera bag for this trip. So I'll be doing a review on that. And there'll also be a review coming out before I leave on a new film scanner. Yes, there is a company out there that is making film scanners, still making them basically. And this is a new updated version of one of their older scanners, which I reviewed previously. So if you're interested in those two items, please remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. I think you gotta do and all that stuff down below. Now, let's talk about my Leica MP, the film I'm taking, and why I'm going to Taiwan and Japan in basically a week's time. Less than a week actually. When you see this video, it'd be less than a week. So I've been getting quite a few questions lately about my Leica MP. Now I thought I reviewed, no I didn't actually review, I unboxed this camera a year ago, but it turns out it was two years ago and I unboxed it and I never used it. It went back in the box. I know I'm gonna get all these comments down below, but just hit me with it, I don't care. The reason I haven't used the MP is basically because I have my M6. And I love my M6. My M6 is my everyday camera. I take it everywhere with me. All of the photos on this camera are basically just daily photos that I take. It's always in my bag. I don't show people those photos, but if you're interested in seeing what I get up to in daily life, which I don't think is that exciting, and seeing my daily film photos, let me know down in the comment section. I may start putting videos together weekly or fortnightly of what I get up to each day and some of the photos I take and some of the work that I actually do. Now I received this bag of film from VH Photo in New York. I ordered it on the Friday and it turned up on the Monday. Crazy, isn't it? The reason I order my film from VH Photo is they have it in stock and they're a lot cheaper than New Zealand prices. And plus I get it a lot faster than I would if I ordered it in New Zealand. So that's basically why. I'll put a link to all the film down below in the description. So I put the bag over here and I'm gonna show you guys what film I'm taking with me. I'm not taking all of these rolls of film because there's quite a few rolls in there, but I will be taking a selection of each film, basically. To start off, I have Tri-X 400, probably the best black and white film for street photography. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comment section, but this is still, in my opinion, the best black and white 400 speed film you can buy. The next film is Portra 400. Now I'll be shooting this at 200 speed, not 400 speed, and overexposing it by one stop basically, because I do like the look of that. Portra, when it's shot at normal box speed, I, I think it's quite dull, but if you overexpose it by one stop, it does have a really nice unique look to it. So it's five rolls of Portra 400. The next film is Cine Steel 800T. I don't use this film very often, because here in New Zealand, everything shuts down like at four or five o'clock at night, and there aren't many neon signs. But this film would be really good for Taipei, and also Tokyo because at night all the street lights come on and all the neon signs come on and it will be a really nice film to shoot. So I have 10 rolls of that. I'm probably gonna take all 10 rolls with me. Yeah, probably gonna take all 10 rolls with me. Maybe I'll shoot all of them. Now the next film is, I'm gonna put, I'll put this bag here, okay? Because it'd be easier. I'm sorry about the rustle. All right, so we have that one there. And then we have another Cine Steel film. Talk about these in a minute. Okay, so put them there. I have Kodak P3200 Max. Now I shot this film in Taiwan three and a half years ago. That was the last time I was there. That's actually probably the last time I did street photography too. I don't do street photography in New Zealand. Um, this film is a beautiful film. The grain on this is, I just love this film. The grain is it's beautiful. Everything about the film is beautiful basically, but it's a really nice film. Now here's a couple of photos I shot the last time I was in Taiwan with a flash and this film. It has a very unique look to it. I do like this film. I have five rolls of that. And again, I might take all of these with me. I 
put them over out of the way, right. And then last, I have Cine Steel 400D, which is a daylight balance film. This is gonna be used for daytime street photography. This will be my main street photography color film that I'm gonna be using. I've never shot this film before. If you have shot this film before, let me know down below. If there's anything different I need to do, I'm just gonna shoot it at box speed 400 basically. The results I've seen online, this is a really nice looking film. So I'm looking forward to shooting this one. But again, this was quite expensive. I think all Cine Steel film now is expensive. If you guys can think of any other film that I should test while I'm away, let me know down in the comment section. I think I've covered all my bases there with that film, but if there's anything out there you think I should try and, and test, let me know down in the comment section. Now, so let's talk about these little canisters that are in the bag as well. Now these canisters are for bulk loading film. You can load your own film from a bulk loader. Now I've never done that before. The reason I have these is a very good friend of mine gave me a bulk loader a while back and it's got film in it. And he believes it's HP5, there's a roll of HP5 in there. But, and it's a very big but, it's been under his house since the 70s, which is basically like 50 years. It's been there for 50, 50 odd years and I'm gonna load some of the film into these canisters and I'm gonna shoot it and see what happens. It could completely destroy one of my cameras, but be quite interesting. So that video will be coming up in a few weeks when I get back because I don't have time to do that before I leave. So that's what these little canisters are for. It'll be quite interesting to see if that film is usable or what the results are gonna be. I just really hope it doesn't damage any of my cameras. So that's what these little canisters are for. Now, so let's talk about my Leica MP. Now I've been getting quite a few questions lately about the camera, do I still own it? How am I gonna do a review on it? Um, what's happened with it, basically? I thought I only did the unboxing a year ago. It turns out it was actually two years ago, which is quite a long time. But like I said, I've had no reason to use it because I've got my M6. So the MP and my M10P will be coming to Taiwan with me and to Japan as well. So this will be my main camera to use when I'm not working. Because my trip to Taiwan is mostly work, it's gonna be really good to get back there and work. I haven't been there for three and a half years, so I do miss a lot of my clients and my friends. This will be my 53rd time to Taiwan. That shows you how many times I've been there. And no, I don't speak any Mandarin or Taiwanese. I'm pretty lazy, I'm English. And then we're heading over to Tokyo to shoot for a new client, just a quick video for them. And I'm actually meeting my family out there. My sister and my mum are flying from the UK to meet us in Tokyo because they've never actually met my son, Jack. He's just turned four. And because of COVID and everything, they never actually met him. So we've decided to meet in the middle. So. We spend most of my time with my family, but I do plan to get quite a few videos out with my Leica MP, some other gear I'll be reviewing, and there is a new camera turning up, hopefully this week, because I need it before I go, and I'll be doing a review on that camera as well. It's quite a unique camera. Not many people actually own this camera. It's been out for a little while, but it's a very, very special camera. So I'll be doing the reviews on that gear will mostly happen when I get back because I won't have time to edit as much as I would like to. Now, a quick question for you out there, if you're in Japan, I know where to get my film developed in Taiwan. Um, there's a place I use in Taipei, absolutely amazing film developers, and they're really nice people as well, they're lovely people. But in Tokyo, I don't. There's nowhere I know where to get film done. I'm staying in Shinjuku? Yeah, Shinjuku, I'm staying in Shinjuku, and I need to know if there's a local place that I can get my film developed and it can do it in about 24 hours. So if you guys know of a place in Shinjuku that I can get my film developed, please let me know down in the comment section. Now before I go, if any of you wanna catch up for a coffee, a chat, or just go and shoot some street together, you can send me an email. My email address is on the about page of this channel, or you can leave me a comment down below and we'll find some way of connecting, I guess. Now I'm staying near Taipei Main Station in Taipei, and I'm in Shinjuku in Tokyo. I'll be free most evenings in Taipei, but not during the day, because I'm there to work basically. I've got quite a busy schedule, but in Tokyo, I'm a bit more flexible. So if you do want to catch up, even if it's just for a, a coffee and a chat, please let me know. It'd be great to catch up with some of you. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget, another video coming in a couple of days. And as always, thank you so much for watching.